Hey watercolor wizards, Hajra here. I divide my art videos 50-50 between original pieces and master studies, and sometimes I'll end up with a painting that's half a study, half original, like the one in this video. George Lucas said he was inspired by Mexican revolutionary hairstyles to come up with the famous Princess Leia Cinnabundu. Like a handful of other people online, I think that the Leia hair and more came from the golden oldie comic book Flash Gordon, which Lucas has actually mentioned generally as influential to him. Here's an ink drawing from Flash Gordon. It's by the great Alex Raymond and it's of Queen Freya. When comparing Princess Leia and Queen Freya, both women have a royal rank, rhyming dual syllable names, and similar side bun hairdos. Not to mention Flash Gordon is an old sci-fi space opera. So I bet this is where the Star Wars princess brainstorm happened for Lucas. That's totally okay. All writers and artists have influences, so why not just acknowledge that directly? Along with Mooka paintings and women's glamour photos, Ozma of Oz had the style too, as seen here in John Neal's ink drawing. And in this ink study, I did of Ozma several years ago. Anyway, I've had Alex Raymond on my list of art study video projects for a while, and I ended up doing a study of Freya with some original additions to turn her into Leia to emphasize how Lucas borrowed hair, personage, and backdrop from Flash Gordon. The Freya reference was a black and white drawing, so the other addition I made is color. As with any piece I do, I started with a freehand sketch, and if it's going to be inked in the end, it needs to be more detailed. Then I used a platinum colored zig marker, which is a new color for me, for the first time to ink and erase the pencil. I did this in my 5 by 8 moleskin journal as I tend to do studies and casual work in journals and save my arches watercolor paper for original. I mixed a grayish color with my three primary colors and used that for the background. I replaced the space cave background with a loose indication of a Star Wars spaceship interior and the door she's leaning on into a purple shadowed spaceship wall. I also made her face more like Carrie Fisher's, more determined, smarter, and serious looking, and made her hair into world buns rather than Freya's braided buns. The aqua brick pans I used didn't give the best results. It was when I started to paint her arm that I realized that the journal paper was too textured for a smooth skin with watercolor crayons or aqua brick pans because there's a grainy result that makes the skin look sort of dirty due to the wax or opaque content when it's used thin down here. It really looks like crayon on this paper rather than the gouache results I get on finer paper like Arches or Fabriano. I'm glad this wasn't the first or only paper I tried these colors on, otherwise I would have thought they always do this. And soon thereafter I realized the platinum marker was a good find for lines light enough to disappear under paint layers, which is a really good thing in many paintings if you don't want to use pencil. However, for this piece, which is supposed to have strong ink lines, it was just too light and disappearing under the paint, so I had to go back and re-ink with a black marker. These dual tip markers are light fast and also nice and waterproof so I don't have to wait to ink last. The tips are not variable width tips like a chisel tip or brush tip marker, so if thicker lines are desired they have to be built up and colored in. Alex Raymond's ink line variation was superb, and this sort of fine tip marker with a monotonous line really doesn't do him justice. The easiest and cleanest way to get his style is to just use a brush nib or brush tip marker. Alex Raymond used live models for his pose references and it shows in how how realistic the whole gesture is here and how solid the splayed hand and pointed toe look. It really was a pleasure to redraw the Freya pose and use it for a Leia piece. This sort of paper doll technique, as I like to call it, is wonderful practice for studies and developing your drawing and painting skills and confidence. I used to do it all the time when I was a kid and it's still a fun exercise to return to sometimes. The shading on her white clothes is blue, colder and cleaner than the purple for the ship shadows, and since there is no color reference, I do what I did when I colored my black and white study of Tenniel's White Rabbit, just to use the ink lines as a guide for where the shadows should fall, and any place that's ambiguous shade for a pleasing final balance of blue areas. You might notice I turned Freya's bare leg into a legging clad one. Princess Leia wore white pants as part of the Hoth snowsuit and Endor jumpsuit costumes, and it felt more like her style. I maybe should have given her long sleeves for the same reason, but I liked how that scarf draped down and behind the figure, so I left her arms bare, as I figured if she covered up more, what would she need the wrap for? <laughs> also, there was a lot of white with purple or blue shadows in the piece, the spaceship, and the rest of her clothes, so the skin was actually a much needed pop of warm color. If this was just a black and white ink piece like the study reference, it wouldn't matter how we clothed her, but since there is color, we need to take advantage of the temperature and value contrast her skin and hair can provide. The face and hair I did with a minimal amount of fuss and retouching. Again, this paper does not appreciate too much lifting and adjusting. It did keep it looking more like simple old comic cell color, so it worked out for this piece.
The funnest addition to this hybrid study original was a ship window that shows a glimpse of outer space. I blotted in blue, violet, and red violet for the loose galaxy sky first. I didn't blot in any black paint into the sky, but you could definitely do that for more contrast and pop. I like the idea of more contrast, but I didn't want to sacrifice any color areas in this color sparse piece, so the only place I used black was for the ink marker outlines. <laughs> Then I splattered in some white gouache for stars. You can rub at some of them to fade and blur them and make them look more distant and also wipe off any stray star spatters outside of the sky area with a damp brush or paper towel. Now all we have left are the moons or planets. I drew in five of them because it was an odd number which is always more dynamic than an even number and three seemed too few and seven too many. I put down the sphere so they offset Leia's stance. She's sort of in an apostrophe shape on the right and they're sort of in a apostrophe shape on the left. But they are all different sized circles for maximum interest and and four of them are on the warmer side because the little pops of warmth are a welcome reprieve from all that cool everywhere else, just like Leia's skin and hair. Made sure to imply some quick craters and such on those moons, and that wrapped up this quick piece, and I was able to post it for May the 4th Be With You Star Wars Day on Instagram. Yeah, it's silly, but if you love Star Wars, it's too much fun to resist. Thanks for parking your brushes here. Hope you enjoyed this original slash study combo piece. Please comment, subscribe, and check out my website links below, and until next time, Galactic Art Adventures.